Hello, friends. This is Dave Hurwitz, executive editor at ClassicsToday.com, here with Dave's faves. And one of my absolute faves, as some of you may know, is C.P.E. Bach. In fact, I am like the people of the 18th century. I like him better than his dad. I really do. He's such a fascinating artistic figure who wrote scads of marvelous music that's, that's basically unknown. I mean, I found out about this stuff actually in two ways. One was writing a book about him, which always is a good way to get started because it's only been possible to evaluate his complete output and write a book about him, I think, since the the huge trove of Bach manuscripts, the old Berlin Zing Academy archive, was discovered hiding out in a, in a dungeon somewhere in Poland and repatriated to Germany. It's an amazing legacy of stuff, including a lot of works that were thought lost. And so now we have a much more rounded picture of what the guy accomplished, which was a lot, let's put it that way. The other way I got to know him was when Hensler released his complete piano music with Anna Maria Markovina, a wonderful, wonderful set, which is fantastic for putting onto your your earbuds, walk thing, ear pod, phone, whatever music transmittal device you're using, and walking, because it just it just sounds great. It's constantly quirky and interesting and full of life, and it just puts a spring in your step. It really, really does. But this is a box on archive. Now the the hardcore period instrument Baroque people did not devote much time and attention to C.P.E. Bach in the 70s and 80s. He wasn't, you know, making his comeback. I mean, he's still sort of, people are doing the keyboard music, let's put it that way. When Marc-Andre Hamelin does C.P.E. Bach, you kind of know he's arrived, let's put it that way. But, and Pletnev, and people like that, yes. So it's great that it's getting done. But this disc contains symphonies and concertos throughout the archive catalog. The main artists being Reinhard Goebel, Trevor Pinnock, and Carl Richter. But the other people in here, look at this list. Jörg Demas, Fischer Dieskow, Robert Hill, Christopher Hogwood, Catherine McIntosh, Nick McGagan, Anthony Pleath, Stephen Preston, Andreas Steyer, and Colin Tilney. Wow, it's like a who's who of the early music world. So let's let's look at this. It has one, two, three, six discs, and uh, talk about what's in there because it's like wow, amazing. I don't know if it's still available, of course. Who the heck knows? But it's it's a wonderful little set to have if you can get your hands on it. And you know the contents of this were broken up and scattered about because there's like now a Reinhard Goebel box, and so the in that box, that kind of stuff. First, the string symphonies with Trevor Pinnock and the English concert. The string symphonies are amazing, forward-looking, fascinating pieces. They were commissioned by Baron von Sweeten, you know, who who did you know the libretti for Haydn's oratorios and told Mozart to orchestrate Handel. He was the royal librarian. And he basically said to C.P. Bach, write whatever you want. He was the ambassador to Hamburg at that point or something, or Berlin or one of those places. It was Hamburg. And he, he said, you can do anything you want. I just want you to write to your heart's content. And so C.P.E. Bach turned out these six extraordinary works for strings and continuo. Then we have four orchestral symphonias, um, Votken 183. These are, these are bigger and um, a little bit more more fulsome. But you know, his symphonies are all in three movements, usually with movements that are all connected to one another. And and they're just incredibly quirky and full of harmonic interest. So that's with Carl Richter and the Munich Bach Orchestra, which is of course going to you know raise the eyebrows of the more hardcore period instrument people, but it's they're fine. And then we have the concerto for two harpsichords in F major and some music by Wilhelm Friedmann Bach, his concerti for two harpsichords. There are two of them. And that's plays are played by Andreas Steyer and Robert Hill with Musica Antigua Cohen and Reinhard Goebel. That's the first three discs. Voila. CD4, concertos for flute and strings. The concerto in A minor, the concerto in B flat major with Stephen Preston, transverse flute, and the English concert and Pinnock again. These were also all arranged for keyboard. So you can get them in both versions. They're wonderful pieces. I have to say, I kind of like them better for keyboard because the flute's kind of annoying, what can I tell you? And then we've got his 
quartets, trios. You know, the quartets are fantastic, um, also called trios, because they're really in four parts, but they're for three things. So it's, it's the trio for harpsichord, obligato, flute, viola, and cello. So you see it's got four people doing it, or they're in three voices. It's one of those weird quasi-Baroque things. What matters is how many voices there are, not how many people play them. But in this case, you need four people to play them, to do the three voices, and the one of the guys is on a bass, but it's, uh, never mind. The music is wonderful. So there's two of those, and then a Fantasia in C major for forte piano, and another quartet. So there's three quartets, and it's Nick McGagan is playing the flute, Catherine McIntosh, the, the, the viola, Anthony Pleath, the cello, and Christopher Hogwood is at the forte piano. And these are, these are fascinating works. Absolutely sui generis. They sound like nothing else in the universe. And finally, a last disc of Odes, Psalms, Leader, and Fantasias with all kinds of people, all those other people I was, I was doing. His vocal music was extremely popular, especially his vocal music on sacred texts. You know, this again was for performance at home by devout people who wanted some entertainment that was also morally edifying. And so that's what he wrote. And so we have the, the, the odes and we have, let's see, some other not sacred things, Der Frühling, The Spring, and his Fantasia in C minor and some other keyboard things and some psalm settings and a Christmas song and I mean, all kinds of stuff with Fisher D. Scow, baritone, Jörg Damus playing a tangent piano. You know, one of those, it has a tangent and it's a piano, who cares what it is. And Colin Tilney on the clavichord, a genuine example of, of 18th century domestic music making at its best. So there you go, six amazing discs of CPE Bach stuff. And it does give a sense of just what his range was, how versatile he was, how much music he composed in different media. It's wonderful. He was such a great composer. He's so worth getting to know. If you could find this box, snag it. If you can't, you could just look for these bits of things. Just keep your minds open and listen to other things. There's the Hensler Big Edition. There's lots of CPE Bach out there. Um, he just has to be discovered. You need to discover CPE Bach. It's amazing, amazing music. So keep on listening, friends. Thanks so much for joining me. Take care.